Okay, solving exponential equations. Uh, we have really two types of exponential equations. One is where we have like bases, and then the other types where the bases are not like. Um, first off, let's take a look at the like bases. Here's the most basic exponential equation you would have. If I'm going to say solve, and I've got, let's say, 2 to the x equals 2 to the fifth. I mean, there's not much going on here. If the bases are the same, that means the exponents have to be the same. So logically here, if x wasn't 5, this wouldn't be a true statement. 2 to the fifth is only going to equal 2 to the fifth. So x in this case would have to equal 5. We need to understand that we're not dividing both sides by 2. Uh, I guess you could say we're ignoring them. We're really not. We're noticing that they're the same, and that's why those two have to be the same. If the bases are the same, the exponents have to be the same to create this true statement. So let's kind of move this up here. Let's go to like an e. Let's say e to the x equals e to the seventh. Uh, same idea. I don't really care what the base is, but once I realize they're the same, then that means that the two exponents have to be the same. So x equals seven. Okay. Now let's step this up a little bit here. A little, then some progression, but we need these bases to be the same. If they're the same, I can go right to comparing the exponents. So let's get a couple different looks here. Let's go 4 to the x plus 5 equals 4 to the 12. So a little bit more going on with the exponent, added in the plus 5, but still what I notice is, hey, you know what, same base. I want that 4. All right, so I've got 4 as being the same base which means these two exponents have to be the same. So x plus 5 has to equal 12. That part I know. Solve that equation, x would have to be 7. We can make those exponents even more elaborate. My focus is still on the base, so I'm just switching the bases around. Let's go pi to the 3x minus 1 equals pi to the 5x plus 4, something like that. The key is still both of them have the pi, so the bases are the same. That's the important piece. Once I have that, then I know these two exponents have to be the same. 3x minus 1 must equal 5x plus 4, and then we're just solving equations here like we've done before. Nothing new on the equation solving aspect of it. So let's see, negative 5 to 2x. x would be negative 5 halves for that piece. Now, we can also run into situations where, do something like this. Let's go 2 to the 4x minus 5 equals 8. Now these two bases definitely are not the same. A 2 and an 8 are not the same number. Right? But I can make them the same. And the only way I can do this comparison of exponents is if these bases, whatever they are, are the same. So when I'm looking up there at a 2 and an 8, what I can do is I can rewrite the 8 as 2 cubed. Now, our old equation rules were very simple. If you do something to one side, you have to do it to the other side. Well, that right side there on that 8, I didn't do any kind of operation to the 8. I didn't add a value, subtract a value, multiply or divide. I just rewrote the 8 in a different form. Right? So I didn't really do any kind of operational piece to that right side, so I don't need to change the left. Right? So 8, I rewrote as 2 cubed. And the nice part is, there's those two like bases there. And so once they're like, 2 and 2, 4x minus 5 would have to equal 3. I can solve this, 4x is 8, x is 2, and I divide that 4 over. Let's get a couple more in here like that, that don't look like to start with, but we can make them like. That's something like this. Let's go about 4 to 7x minus 3 
equals 16 to the 3x plus 2. Okay. So I'm looking right at the bases. I can tell quickly that 4 and 16 are not the same number. That's pretty obvious. The question is, can I make these bases the same? I can't change the 4 to the uh, 16. I know you're thinking, well, wait a minute. You can multiply this by 4 and get well, then That means I've got to multiply that side. I want to be able to rewrite a value. So I'll go to the lower one. I can rewrite 16 as 4 squared. I'll just rewrite the rest of it up here. Everything else stayed the same, but I rewrote the 16 as a 4 squared. With that being there, notice I didn't multiply, divide, or anything in the 16. I just rewrote it as 4 squared. This would mean 4 to the 7x minus 3 would have to equal 4 to the 6x plus 4. So in comes your old exponent rules. If you have a power raised to a power, you would multiply them. So last time you saw something like this may have been back when you had something like x cubed raised to the fourth. Multiply exponents and get x to the twelfth. So whatever that exponent is, we can multiply them. So I'm distributing that two through to get six x plus four. Now's the nice thing, like bases. I can compare the exponents. 7x minus 3, 6x plus 4. Right. So you get those two in there, and then I'm just solving for x. x would be 7. Getting a lot of 7s today for some reason. Let's look at a little bit different type there. Well, same type, but different problem up here. Let's go, uh, let's say 2 to the 4x minus 1 equals, and let's go back to that 8. We'll practice with that guy again. 8 to the 2x plus 3. Let me make something up here. So we've got 2 and 8. So again, I can go to the 2, or excuse me, the 8, the base of 2. So I'm going to change that 8 to a 2 cubed. Rewrote the 8 as a 2 cubed, and then I can go through, distribute those exponents. So I have 2, the 4x minus 1 is 2, distribute that, 6x plus 9. Best part is I have those like bases, which means I can set the exponents equal to each other. Subtract my 4, subtract my 9, so let's see, negative 10 is 2x, x is negative 5. Let's look at one more here, like this anyway. Let's go 9 to the 2x equals 27. So again, a couple bases there. I know 9 and 27 definitely are not the same. So I want to get them the same base. Now this time I'm going to have to go to 3's on both sides. Now 9 to some power would give me a 27, but I have no idea off the top of my head what that power would be. Okay? For example, 9 to the first is 9, 9 squared is 81. So it's something between that 1 and 2. So if I go to 3's, 27 is 3 cubed. 9 is 3 squared. And again, this is that 2x. So now 3 squared to the 2x, power to power we multiply, would be 3 to the 4x. That's 3 cubed. Now I have those like bases I wanted. 4x is 3, x is 3 fourths. Now we're going to take a look at how to work with them when you have unlike bases. All right, so how to work with it when you have unlike bases. Now, when I say unlike bases, I'm referring to ones that you can't make like. So for example, I can make 8 in terms of 2, 9 and 27 I can make in terms of 3s, but there are some numbers out there I cannot make like. Okay? 
For example, if I had something like a 3 to the x equals uh, 7, I'm not going to make a 3 and a 7 a like base. No way around that. So let's take a look at what we can do here when that happens. So, raise this, and we're still solving exponentials, but now we're going to look at with unlike bases. With unlike bases, we're going to say use log or ln. With unlike bases, use log or natural log. Either one works fine. Okay. Now when I say with unlike bases, that means either I can't make a like base or maybe I just don't see how to do it. So let's take another look at this number 8 I had up here before. And I'm just going to rewrite it over here. 9 to the 2x is 27. Okay. So let's pretend we had no idea about going to 3's. And that can happen to us. Sometimes we see it. We know exactly what to go to. Other times we struggle and we're like, gosh, I don't see a like one there. Well, this process will work whether you can see a like base or not. Okay? So it's nice if you can see like bases because if you can create it, you get to compare those exponents. But every now and then we get something we either don't see or we can't do it. Okay? So let's pretend we can't see the threes here. So we're looking at this and going, all right, 9 and 27 aren't like bases. And I don't see how to make them a like base. Okay? What I want to use are my logarithms. So I'm going to use that old equation rule, whatever I do to the left, I have to do to the right. So I'm going to take the log of both sides. Right, so I did an operation there, I'm going to take the log of both sides. Now the reason is, it's because this exponent up here where the x is, that's the problem. I need it down where I can work with it. When I could get like bases, I could pull it down and work with it. Because I was just working with the exponent. If I don't have like bases, I still need it down there. In comes our logarithmic properties. On our log properties that we've seen before, the exponent moves to the front. So I can rewrite this as 2x log 9 equals log 27. Now if I want x along, x would be log 27 divided by 2 log 9. And when I put that in my calculator, it will give me 0.75, which is the same as 3 fourths fraction or a decimal. It doesn't matter to me which one you're using there. Okay. When you're substituting this in the calculator, when you have more than one term, you want to make sure that you have parentheses around that denominator. So for most of your scientifics, it would open parentheses. We've seen this. Pulls it after the 27. Divide it by open again to get the entire denominator in there. 2 log 9 close, close. Get that 0.75. Practice with it. Make sure you're able to get that value. Okay. So there's an example of, hey, you know what? Yes, you could get like bases, but I just don't see it, so I can use my logarithms. Okay. Here's one where, for example, you have no chance. <laughs> let's go 4 to the x equals, uh, let's go 13. Uh, there is no like base between 4 and 13 as far as an integer is concerned. So in comes the logarithms. So I'm going to use a log on both sides. Log 4 to the x. Log 13. At x, moving to the front. x log 4. Log 13. Divide it over, log 13 over log 4. Let's see what that value is. I get about 1.85. Now you may notice this was that exponential form. So we actually could do the rewrite. 
So if I look at this originally and did the rewrite to a logarithmic form, x would be log 13 base 4. And now you're seeing where that change base formula came from. That piece. So I'm using the log on each side versus the rewrite to here, just so we can see this coming in front each time using those properties. If I had went back and used, say, a natural log, it wouldn't matter. LN, LN, X, LN4, LN13, X would be LN13 over LN4 will still give you 1.85. So we could use a regular log or a natural log. Let's get a different one up here. Let's go with 4. Uh, what did I have here? Well, let's change that. Let's go 5 to the 2x minus 1 equals 3 to the 4x plus 5. So a much more elaborate one here, but we're going to follow that same process. I can't get a like base between the 5 and the 3. So what I want to be able to do is get that 2x minus 1 and 4x plus 5 down where I can work with it. In comes the logarithms. And again, you could use a regular log or a natural log. Both work the same. Uh, I have a habit of just using the regular log all the time. I don't think it's any easier. It just that's usually the habit I gravitate to. Nothing. I don't think anyone, one's better than the other at all. These powers moving down to the front. So I'm going to have 2x minus 1, log 5, 4x plus 5, log 3. 2x minus 1, log 5, 4x plus 5, log 3. Now it looks a lot worse, um, but this is basically going to be our distributive property. So to kind of give you an example here. We've seen this in the past as far as solving equations. You know, if I had something like this, 2x minus 1 times 7, 4x plus 5 times 8. Remember how we distribute? We didn't care if the 8 or the 7 was on the left or the right, but we distribute it through and get rid of the parentheses. Okay? Log 5 and log 3, even though they're decimals, I don't know exactly what they are without typing them in, I do know this much, they're numbers, so I can distribute them. We're going to have 2x log 5 minus 1 times log 5 is just log 5 equals 4x log 3 plus 5 log 3. Again, it looks a little bit worse, but think of it this way. Hey, the parentheses are gone. Let's look back at this guy, what you did in the past. You distribute. And then your next step would be you want the x terms on the same side and the other terms on the other side. And that's what we're going to do here. Despite, I know that looks a little bit worse, but I want my x terms on the same side. So in my case, I'm going to move my x's to the left side. So I've got 2x log 5. I'm going to subtract over the 4x log 3 equals right side 5 log 3 plus log 5 that piece. Now I want x alone. Now these two are not like terms. It's okay that they're not like terms. It means I can't actually subtract them and put them together, but I can factor an x out. I'm going to factor an x out. x times 2 log 5 minus 4 log 3 equals 5 log 3 plus log 5. Now I'm set to get x alone. I'll divide both sides by that part that's in parentheses. So x would be 5 log 3 plus log 5 divided by 2 log 5 minus 4 log 3. And you need to make sure you're watching your parentheses. Parentheses around the entire numerator and around the entire denominator. And so when you're practicing, let's see what answer you should get. Um, sometimes these take a minute to go in, but the nice thing is 
Once you do it a few times, you get pretty comfortable using your calculator. And let's see, I got negative 6.04. Negative 6.04. Again, make sure, I'm just double checking my own here, make sure that you get your parentheses in the right spot. It would not have been any easier if you used natural logs. If you did natural log, ln, ln, all the way down, 5 ln 3, ln 5, 2 ln 5, 4 ln 3. It's going to be the same number of steps and processes. Now here's an example where I would suggest using an ln. So let's go e to the negative 2x plus 3 equals 5. Now e and 5, uh, definitely not the same base, okay, and I can't make them the same. So in comes a logarithm. Now when I see an e as a base, yes, I can still use a regular log, but this is when I would gravitate to using a natural log. So if I write it with a natural log, right, power still comes in front, negative 2x plus 3, ln e equals ln 3. Okay. Now here's where the nice thing is when you have that base of e. ln e is 1. The value of the natural log of e is 1, because remember the base is e, and you're taking the log of e. So that actually equals a value of 1. Now what happens when you distribute a 1? Nothing. So you have negative 2x plus 3 is ln 3. If you had left the regular log in, you'd still have a log e here that you're distributing through. The nice thing about the ln is it does go to 1. Now if I solve for x, negative 2x, ln3 minus 3. x would be ln3 minus 3 over negative 2, which is I got about 0.95. So in short, it really does not matter if you're using a regular log or a natural log. Okay? Uh, some people like to do natural log on all of them. It's going to work out just fine. Okay, like I said, you'd have ln's here in the end. Okay. If some people like to use regular logs, and then the only thing I would suggest is if you see e as a base, go to the natural log because of this guy right here. It'll simplify to one. But that's likewise. If I threw a problem in here and did like a ten to the two x minus one. Well, I'd want to use regular log because log of 10 is 1, okay? Just remember, sometimes you can simplify, and I want you to be aware you could use either one, okay? If you actually did log on this one, and log of e, that's not 1, so you would distribute the log of e much like we distributed a log of 5 there, and work our way through it. So we want like bases. If we can get like bases, Compare the exponents. If we can make an adjustment to what's here, to like bases, then I compare the exponents. If I can't, which often happens, then I use logarithms, and the purpose of the logarithm is to bring these exponents into the front, exponents into the front, and I just noticed, I am so sorry, but I had a five there. So this should be five all the way down, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to change this guy to a 3 instead of changing everything else because now it'll work out to that. That's my mistake. I just caught that when I'm looking back at it. I don't know why I wrote a 3 when I originally had a 5, but just change the original problem to a 3, and then we're good to go there on that piece.